Meet the Canon C500 Mark II. This is an interesting camera, one that Canon basically made back in 2018 under the name of the Canon C700 Full Frame. But there were a couple reasons why that version didn't take off. For one, it was pretty unwieldy, it was large, and it wasn't designed for smaller production use. The second reason was the cost. It came in at almost $30,000, which is out of the range for most people who are trying to get into a cinema system like this. And after about a year and a half, Canon has finally released a camera that I think many people have been waiting for. In this video, I'm gonna be covering the Canon C500 Mark II and showing you some sample footage and what you can actually get with this camera. I also wanna talk about some of the things you should know before you get one on set so you have a really good idea of how this thing works once you get it into production. So let's switch over to this right now. We'll start shooting on it so you can see how this looks in a bunch of different environments. All right, so we've switched over from the Sony a7 III. We're now shooting on the Canon C500 Mark II. Now, the first thing that I wanna do while we're in sort of this environment where we're locked down and it's not gonna be changing any of our lighting and stuff like that, I wanna go through all the different picture profiles so you can really see what those all look like as we go through them. So let's start off with the first one, which is BT709. So this is the BT709 or the Custom Picture Profile 1. And this is the sort of a wide DR, just kind of a standard color range that's not gonna have a ton of latitude to it, but it gets you a really nice image right out of the gate. Next is Canon Log 2, which is the Custom Picture Profile 2. And this is the log image, and then we're gonna swipe on a grade to it. So going from log to a graded image, and this is what this one looks like at C Log 2. Not changing any other settings, we're now in Canon Log 3, so a little bit more dynamic range out of this one, but it's definitely a flatter profile and a little bit harder to get back to a Rec 709 or BT 709 color grade. So here's going from the log to a graded image, and that's what the colors and everything looks like with the Canon Log 3. So just doing a quick little vlogging test. Let's change the uh, exposure over here, just throwing on those internal NDs, getting to look a little bit better here. Um, as you can see, the face tracking is working really well to keep my face in focus. It's definitely not a camera designed for vlogging by any means, but it definitely works for this sort of setup and because it's full frame, it's a little bit wider. But let me see if I can put this down and we'll keep talking. So I wish it was a little bit brighter out. I had some sun coming through so you can really see the dynamic range. I mean, you can kind of see it through the trees behind me, but it's not super great test of the dynamic range. Anyway, we can still cover some of the things about this camera and stuff that you should know. So starting off with the body of the camera, if you're familiar with like the C100, 200, or 300, this camera is gonna be very comfortable for you. You're gonna basically know where everything is and the menus are almost identical to the 200 and 300. So it has that really nice small form factor, which is super convenient to be able to put it on gimbals and it has access to all of the buttons and all the features that you need right on the side of the camera. So you don't have to go digging through menus to figure this thing out and start shooting and be able to change settings on the fly. Now with the C500 Mark II, they've added on a little bit of a modular design to the camera. Now you don't need any of these extra things to be able to make it work. You can get away with just using the camera and you have all of the capabilities of shooting the RAW internally, as well as some of the other codecs and frame rates and things like that. But what this expansion pack does is allows you to add on things like a viewfinder if you wanted to have an eye cup to be looking through instead of just the LCD. You can also add on expansions to have more XLR inputs, as well as battery powering options to add on V-mount or gold mount batteries. Now in terms of codex, you get the best of both worlds with the C200 and C300 Mark II. It has the raw capabilities like the C200, which is internal, but this is a full raw. It's not a raw light like the C200 has. You also get some higher quality internal codex like the XFAVC, which is a 422 10-bit internal codec to allow you to get some really high quality footage that you're gonna have some really nice flexibility with in post without needing the super high data rate of raw. With RAW on this camera, when you're shooting full resolution at 24 frames a second, you get about eight minutes on a 256 gigabyte card. If you switch over to the 422 10-bit XAVC codec, you get about 80 minutes on a 256 gig card. So it definitely gives you a lot more space if you're recording longer format things. Now, one of the big things with the C500 and why it really stands out from the C200 and C300 is that it uses a full frame sensor. Now you get a bunch of benefits with having a full frame sensor, one of them being better dynamic range. You have a larger surface area on the sensor for it to actually gather information and keep that dynamic range in those highlights and in the shadows. The next part is low light performance. Because it's a larger sensor, it has bigger photo sites so it can actually gather more information in each of those to perform better in low light. 
It also has a higher resolution being a 5.9K sensor. So when you downscale it to 4K, you're actually shrinking the pixel density, you're calling a pixel pinch. And because you're shrinking it down, that noise is getting smaller as well. So it looks like a cleaner image. Now there's some downsides to a full frame sensor as well. For the past couple of years, Super 35 has been the go-to for companies to be manufacturing lenses for, and that's been really the largest sensor they've had to deal with in the cinema world. But now with all of these larger format cameras coming out, the lenses are trailing behind and trying to keep up and releasing new lenses for this full frame and larger format system. One of the really great things about the C500 Mark II is that you have the option to switch between full frame, Super 35, and Super 16 sensor coverage. Now this is really great because you have the option to use those older lenses that aren't designed for full frame sensors, but it also crops in on the sensor. So you're not getting the full potential out of this camera going into those different modes. And basically all it's doing is cropping in on a smaller area or smaller portion of the sensor. So as you do this, it also changes the resolution. When you're using that full frame, you can get up to that 5.9K. And as you go down into the Super 35, it drops to 4K. And then down to Super 16, it drops to 2K resolution. Now stepping out from the sensor, Canon has also introduced a new interchangeable lens mount. Now there's three different options here. There's the Canon EF, which is the one that I'm using right now. There's a locking EF, which is basically the same thing, but it has a little more structure and build quality to it to hold on to those heavier lenses and just make sure it's locked in place. And then you have your PL or positive lock lenses, which is what a lot of cinema lenses come from. If you want to shoot on Cooks or Aries, they all use the standard PL system. The great thing about this mount is that it's user changeable. So all you have to do is take off four screws on the mount and you can swap it to a different one if you have other lenses that you wanna be using with this camera. For the next thing, we're gonna talk about the digital IS. Now this is a really interesting thing that they've put into this camera as well as I think a couple of their other cameras. Now because it is a digital or electronic stabilization, it's not using anything to actually move the sensor to adjust it using like gyroscopes. It's analyzing the footage and trying to compensate with electronic or digital stabilization similar to like a warp stabilizer in Premiere. So because of this, if you're close up on an object, you can actually get some warping and distortion of the background, which I don't really like. And I found that most cases I was actually having to turn it off because it wasn't working properly. If you're shooting in wide scenes where you're shooting kind of landscapes or things like that where you're doing it handheld, that works okay. But as soon as you get into close-ups of objects or faces, you definitely start to see some of that warping and distortion. The next few things that I wanna talk about before we get into the Q&A portion of this is some of the firmware updates that could happen to this camera to make it even better and kind of solve some of the annoyances that I've found while using this camera. The first one is the slow motion options. Now when you go into slow motion using the slow and fast button, which changes it from, if you're shooting in say 24 frames a second, it'll change it to 60 frames a second, you lose your autofocus as well as your audio capabilities. Now if you go into your project frame rate and you change that over to 60 frames a second, you can get both autofocus and audio. So it'd be really nice to see that implemented into the slow and fast motion button instead of cutting those features out. The next thing, which isn't gonna be a huge deal for most people because you're probably gonna be staying in the same sort of gamma style for each project, but when you go between those different gammas, it changes the LUT settings to turn them off. So the LUT button won't work until you go back in the menus and turn it on for the video terminal if you're using the LCD screen. Now, like I said, most people probably aren't gonna be using this, but if you're going back and forth between say C-Log3 and C-Log2, if you're shooting in different environments, indoors and outdoors, and it's just a little bit of an extra workflow to get that LUT turned on if you're changing those gammas. And it'd be a really easy fix with firmware to just have that setting stay on no matter what gamma you're using. The next thing along this firmware line is when you're going through the menus, there's a lot of things that are grayed out. And as you go over them, it doesn't really give you a clear indication of why it's grayed out or what settings you have that are stopping you from being able to use some of these features. So it'd be really nice to have a little more information in there. And that's something that they could update, obviously tying in with the user interface and development and stuff like that to give you that information. So you could actually go back and change settings if there's features that you wanna use and you don't know why they're grayed out. And then the last thing is frame rate options. Now I know this camera has a massive amount of processing and I know it can do more and higher frame rates than what it's currently doing right now, but you can only get 120 frames a second in the super 16 mode, which gives you a massive crop on the sensor as well as only being able to shoot in 1080 and 2K. So I'd love to see some updates with that, allowing you to either use the full sensor still in only 2K and just sort of subsampling the pixels or allowing you to do higher frame rates in those different resolutions. All right, so let's get into some of the Q&A now and some of the questions that you answered on Instagram and on the YouTube channel. Okay, so the first one is from AJ Cole. Is it worth the $16,000 and what else compares to it for less? Now, really the one of the big competitors out there right now is the Sony FX9. I haven't had a chance to put these side by side, but that's definitely gonna be a competitor for the Canon C500 Mark II. And I definitely wanna put those head to head and kind of test them and see how they stack up against each other. 
As far as a more affordable option, there's not a lot that's doing full frame unless you go into the mirrorless and DSLRs, but then you lose a lot of the prosumer and pro level features of having like XLRs and all of these extra features and stuff on the outside of the camera. The next question is from Blake Hoddle, and he asks, would love to know how well my C300 Mark IIs will match the color of this camera. Now, because it's coming from the same camera manufacturer of Canon, they have very similar colors, and they've always been really solid with skin tones and everything like that. So you're gonna get a lot of that same color science in this camera and with this sensor. The only thing that you're gonna have to really worry about is sort of the different look of full frame versus Super 35. But for the most part, you're gonna have a very similar look, and you're gonna have a really easy time cutting between both of these cameras. The next question is from Donut Shop, and he's asking about raw performance, low light, and skin tones. Now the raw performance, I think I kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier, but the raw performance takes a massive amount of data. Like I said, on a 256 gigabyte card, you get about eight minutes of raw footage. So it's definitely a workhorse and is gonna tax your computer quite a bit going through all of that footage. In terms of low light, it is a full frame sensor, so you're gonna have some better low light performance than the C300 and C200. And then the skin tones, it's Canon, so they've always been really solid with skin tones, definitely leaning a little bit more towards the magenta. And I really wanna sit down and set this up in the studio and go through the low light performance, high ISO tests, as well as the exposure recovery to see how well this raw performance works and the low light is. The next one's from Raul Russo, and he asked about dynamic range, try to recover some shots. So I'm definitely gonna do this when I get my hands on this camera again. I'm going to be shooting a bunch of sample footage and I'll be doing my high ISO and exposure recovery test like I just mentioned. And I'll be going through all of those and kind of showing how this raw workflow works as well as the XF AVC codec. Next one comes from Frederick Recchi. Why does the 1DX Mark II have dual pixel AF while filming at 120p and the C500 doesn't? Now this is a interesting question. It's probably for Canon. I don't know exactly why they held out this uh, feature on this, but as Canon goes, they kind of hold out some features here and there so they can release it in future updates and things like that. The camera definitely has the processing power to do it, but I'm not exactly sure why Canon held it out for this camera. The next and final question is from Nico Fabrio. Sorry if I'm butchering that name, but he asks, how much does this camera cost? Now the cost is about 16,000 US dollars and it gets you basically the body, the top handle, the LCD, and the whole kit basically to get started. There's obviously a bunch of additions that you can add on like the expansion packs and that's gonna add some more cost to it. If you wanted to try this camera out before you drop the big bucks on it, you could also rent it and we have links in the description down below if you wanted to try it out over on Lens Pro to Go. So definitely do that if you're interested in this camera and you don't know if you wanna actually drop the $16,000 yet. So that's gonna kind of wrap this video up. I know I kind of rushed through this pretty quick. And if you have any other questions that I didn't get to answer in this video, make sure to let me know in the comments down below and I will definitely try to get back to you as soon as I can. Again, if you wanna try this camera out, there's gonna be links in the description for that. And if you wanna see more videos like this talking about the C500, I had another one kind of going over the full exterior of the camera, which I'll throw a link to up here. So check that out. And if you enjoyed this one, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,